The, uh, the idea about the interest of the, the best interests of the children has also been used quite a bit in family court, and I believe you've talked about that in, in, in your book as well. And what I've found is that in the Texas Family Code, I looked through it, it's about 1,525 pages. I believe there are about 140 references to the best interests of the child. You know, the judge may know the best interests of the child, the, the attorney, the guardian ad litem, the social worker. Number one, the only person who does not know the best interests of the child is the parent. The parent never knows the best interest of the child. The second thing is, the, um, the best interest of the child has no objective definition. Nobody knows what it means. It's a whim. It's my opinion. If I'm one judge, I might say, this is the best interest of the ch child. Another judge might say, this is the best interest of the child. A social worker might think something different. The, the best interest of the child has no meaning. My meaning assigned to it is this. The best interest of the child in almost every instance is to be raised in an intact family with his or her natural mother and father, period. That's mm -hmm. it. So um, I think that's a huge problem in our Texas Family Code that there's no definition given to the best interest of the child. And I don't know what you think about my definition. Um, would you agree if I said, well, we need to define the best interest of the child so that this doesn't become an opinion from a judge who has no training in any of this stuff, mm -hmm. who, do who doesn't even know the kids, um, who is basically, as you mentioned in some instances, a lawyer in a black robe who is protecting his industry. Mm -hmm. um, do you know of any states that have an actual definition for what the best interest of the child means? No, and I, I don't know that it's even possible to do that. Mm -hmm. I, I would go even a little bit further. I don't think the very discussion is wrong. Uh, the best interest of the child was traditionally determined by the parents, mm -hmm. and that has to be the default position. Uh, the parents determine what is in the best interest of the child mm -hmm. until they do something to forfeit the right to make that determination. Mm -hmm. The default position has to be that parents decide, because you can't say once and for all, you can't define the best interest of the child and say this is it, uh, you know, once and for all. Right. It has to be determined at any given moment when the question arises. Right. Therefore, it has to be determined by the parent. Right. And only by the parent. Once you give that power to decide the best interest of the child, once you transfer that to a government functionary, You've essentially eliminated parenthood. Right. You've essentially eliminated the parents. The parents mm -hmm. are no different than anyone else. Mm -hmm. The judge has become the parent. Uh, so so the, the, this discussion, this entire discussion about the best interest of the child has no place in any legal proceeding unless the parents have forfeited, have done some legal transgression that warrants forfeiting their own parental rights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yet the default position of the state seems to be, especially with an agency like Children's Protective Services, that lovely beloved agency that somehow knows what the best interest of the child is and maybe heard an accusation from somebody somewhere through an anonymous tip line that perhaps this person may have been neglectful of the child. Uh, perhaps the child was playing in the backyard and the mother or the father went to the bathroom and that's neglect um, and they can determine that the best interest of the child is to take the child from the parents. And basically, the state, as you were mentioning, has now become the determiner of the best interest of the child. Right. Um, not just in divorce, but in any other type of instance. And the, the way that the best interest of the child is used, like the propaganda of the deadbeat dad, everybody says, we've got to think about the best interest of the child. Nobody knows what it is. Right. The best interest of the child is the state can use your child, can make a determination, and also, in the instance of child support, the state can make money off of your child by taking one of the parents, forcing one of the parents out of his or her life. And that's what I think is, is, uh, is horrendous. Or even forcing both of the parents out. They, they, these, these principles are not static. They can be extended indefinitely. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's right. Um, there, there are circumstances where, where both parents, where children are taken from both parents, put in foster care, and the parents are forced to pay child support to the foster care system. Right. Now this is, you know, this kind of thing is spreading. It's not, it's not going to, this is a threat to the parental rights of all parents. Here at the college we have a group that, that, uh, that champions the rights of homeschooling parents. Right. For the same, for the same reason. Right. Because once you eliminate um, the rights of um, involuntarily divorced fathers, the parental rights of homeschooling parents, once you violate any parents' rights, uh, all parents' all rights, parents rights are are called into question. It, it won't remain uh, isolated. There's no fire break that prevents these principles from spreading from, from divorced families to, to others. Yeah. Um, and, and so everybody should be concerned about this.